Those of you that are here, again, my friend's been here for several. Welcome back. I'll introduce myself for those few of you that I haven't met. Uh, my name is Chris Nichols. I'm a physical education teacher in Texas, right outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This is my 23rd year of teaching. I've uh, taught elementary. I've been a high school basketball coach. I've been in administration, and now I'm back in the classroom teaching at a Montessori magnet school. So I do three-year-olds all the way up to fifth grade. So this session we're going to work on is how I work with my elementary kids, especially the younger kids, on developing hand-eye coordination. So, and thank you for being here. I'll be giving away all the product down here at the end, plus a $100 gift card. So hang around at the end. If you have any questions, come up and talk to me about it. So this uh, started with this gentleman right here. Back in, gosh, I can't even remember what year, I was at a uh, Share the Wealth conference at Valdosta State in Jekyll Island, Georgia, if you know where that might be. So I went to that, it was a great conference. I went for years and years, but the very first time I went to that conference, I met this gentleman right here, Dave Finnegan. And very unique individual, uh, very passionate about juggling. And I had never juggled before. I'd never taught it in any of my classes. You know, I just thought, you know, it wasn't something we could possibly do. So, from his book, The Complete Juggler, come up with his definition of the verb, to perform tricks of a juggler or to engage in manipulation, especially in order to achieve a desired end. So, using that, not get by the hot mic here again. So we start, especially with my three-year-olds, just basically tracking scarves and what they have. And if you want to come up here and see some of the product and work with me here, what we're going to do, if I can get some volunteers here, what we're going to do is we're just going to let the kids just start with one scarf and they're just simply tracking one object, one hand. And on my walls in the gym, I have right and left so the kids know and I try to model here. So we're just going right, left, right, left. And then we're going to put it in our other hand and have them model that. And the whole time I'm watching them to see if they're tracking the object. And then in, he has a little song called Infinity Sign. So then we take the scarf and they're going to trace an infinity sign with the scarf using this motion. And then from there, they're going to cross the midline, right to left, making their infinity sign. And it's got a cute little song that says infinity sign as we go across the midline, tracking it. And then being from Texas, we're big soccer fans down there, even though we're a football state, the kids love to play soccer. So then we do a little foot juggling to develop their coordination. So they're going to take it and they're going to kick it with one, catch it with one, kick it with one, catch it with one, just like that. And then we're going to try our other foot as they're tracking that. And then my really good soccer kids, they can sit here and they can foot juggle the whole time by alternating right and left and doing that. Not with my three-year-olds, but my older kids can do that. So from infinity sign, we go to the next little cutesy phrase in elementary. We call it crisscross, applesauce. So they're taking two scarves, and there's more scarves over here. If we need more, just take them out there. It doesn't matter. It's great to color code with the kids. Yeah, we're going to go to two. Oh, here. Yeah, you guys can have the same color, but for the kids, it's easier for them to track it if it's, oh, if it's, all... yeah. It's easier for them to track it if they have two different colors. All right, so our pattern now, what we have them working on is crisscross applesauce. So they're going to go crisscross applesauce, working on just that motion, crisscross applesauce. And he's got a song that goes with that also, crisscross applesauce. And we tell the kids you want to focus on the peak. When one gets to the peak, then you toss the other one. All right, now you guys are advanced class. We're moving on to your third scarf. Third scarf. This is where it gets difficult for most of the kids, is the separation of the scarves. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take one scarf, and you're going to pinch it with these two fingers right here. You're going to take the other scarf and hold it with your pointer finger and your thumb. And then your third scarf right here in this hand. 
Now we tell the kids we're still using the same pattern. We're using crisscross applesauce, infinity sign, all the songs that led up to this. But you always have to start with the hand that has two. Making X's across, every time you throw one, you gotta catch one. So we're just gonna start with a one, two, three, and see if you can catch them all. And if you're advanced experts, then you're gonna start again, you're gonna one, two, three. Every time you throw one, you wanna catch one. Every time you throw one, you wanna catch one. And you just keep working on that pattern. Now if the kids have progressed far enough on that level, I'm gonna come over and go, this guy knows how to juggle, oh, no. and he's gonna to go to some cubes. I see another juggler over here. And the same thing, they're gonna get a different object here. And I want them to start at the very beginning again. They're just gonna do one hand, and once they've done that, they're gonna add their crisscross applesauce. One, two, and then she's an expert, so she's gonna to go to three with the juggle. <laughs> That's funny. I've never now, but a scar. <laughs> well, now you're moving on to the next level. What I tell the kids when we're juggling with the balls, especially, we want to keep our elbows tight to our body because as soon as your hands start to separate, then that's when the objects are going to start getting away from you. And some of the kids all have them stand against the wall and keep that wall as their base when they're juggling so they'll keep their throws close to them and they're not chasing them all over the gym. So you can also partner juggle if working on the hand here I could work with him on developing his coordination. So we're going to go one, two, and he's going to toss it back. And we're going to keep working on partner juggle and tracking that way on helping him with their hand-eye coordination. So that's how I use that. So juggling, great skill. If you're in elementary, if you don't have a set of juggling scarves, there's so many activities that you can do with juggling scarves besides juggling. We do fitness activities. We do never-ending flag tag, all sorts of activities you do with scarves. A, a whole thing of scarfs is going to last you a long time. People always ask, uh, you know, washing them. I just put them in the gentle cycle in the washing machine and they come out fine. So that's our juggling skill. And this is some of the products Gopher offers. That's the cubes, that's the scarf set, and that's the bean bags there. Now another thing that Gopher offers, these, these are larger reaction balls that we use in elementary. Now, if you are an, teach older kids, they make the smaller re reaction balls, but those are hard. And the kids, I've had several kids um, get bloody noses because the reaction ball, they just, they, they can't react to it enough in elementary. So I went to these, and we start simple with this game. You're just gonna roll, track it, pick it up, bring it back to the next person line. So we're just going to roll it and watch it and track it all the way down. Then I'm going to get it and bring it to the next person line. I want them following the reaction ball as they're rolling it. I want them tracking it with their eye as they go down the gym and back. And I'll have several groups going. Now, if you trust your kids enough, the next step is with these reaction balls, I'm going to let them drop it and they're going to track it I don't want them to pick it up yet, I just want them tracking the object. And then, if they get good enough, then we're going to have them try to get it on the bounce. That's more my upper kids, but the little kids, it's just roll. I want them following the object. So, you guys can play around with these a little bit and see how those work. Great for elementary. They do make the smaller ones for other So you can see how it reacts to the ground how it's a little softer than the other reaction balls. On this one, so I'd have the kids start with just two. Okay. And they're just gonna practice this, one, two, one, two, and then when you go add the third one in, you're gonna start with this, it's gonna be one, two, three. So you roll this one to your other hand to toss it. So it starts with this one first. And then one, two, three. Perfect. Now if you would just on the yellow one, you had it. Yellow, green, perfect. There you go. All right, so you see why I love these reaction balls. That game right there wears them out. Just rolling it, following it, bringing it back. All right, so from there, here's just 
people always ask, what are your standards in Texas? We have our own standards, you know. Texas doesn't uh, do NASB standards. We write our own, they're called Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. So here's like a sample lesson plans that I would do for a juggling unit. And these are what our standards and objectives are. Our demonstration of learning here, of what we have. And then what is the purposeful instruction? What, what are we trying to teach them with? So I'm modeling correct form and patterns to engage students in these activities. So right off of that, uh, in Mesquite ISD, they do a big cup stacking. I had a girl this year from my school got third in her age bracket. So if you've never cup stacked, again, another awesome hand-eye coordination. And if you've seen some of the fastest stackers in the world, you know, we start the my three-year-olds with just three cups because I want them to know the difference between their right and their left when they're picking them up because otherwise this is what they want to do and they're like look look I made a cannon or something you know <laughs> and and that's okay if we do free play with the cups and they want to create their own patterns that's part of you know the project-based learning that we're letting them do it all but then they're going to go to the three two and working that. So that's an awesome unit if you don't sport stack at your school to do that, to do hand-eye coordination. And of course their favorite thing, if you've never played with foxtails before, this is Gophers uh, version of it, but that's the benefits of our sport stack and that's how it comes in a pack for Gopher. Uh, hand-eye coordination, ambidexterity, bilateral proficiency, concentration, self-esteem. I mean, that girl was so excited when she brought her medal to school. And we let her do show and tell to the whole gym. It's like, I won this medal for the 363 competition at, and she had her little bronze medal and we went over the Olympics and the variation of the levels. And she said, I'm gonna get the gold medal next year. So, but rainbow soft tails. If you haven't played with soft tails, back in the day when I was in school, which was a long time ago, this was, used to have a baseball on the end of it. Oh my gosh, how dangerous is that for elementary kids throwing a baseball up in the air? So with the rainbow soft tails, and you can come up and play with these also, I teach the kids, once again, I don't even want them to catch it yet. I want them to underhand toss and just track the object. Just track it. Toss and track the object. And then they can move to the next skill of trying to catch the tail. So if you want to do that, throw a few of them up track the object, see how soft it goes. And the kids love this, I mean, yeah. And there is a point system, you know, the closer you get to the tail, the better. But, you know, they're, they're excited if they catch any part of it. So, but the whole point is, I just want them throwing it. Now you gotta be careful with uh, elementary kids, they like to throw it and get it caught in the rafters, so. I'll put my basketball goals up and usually they can't throw it and get it in the rafters. So, but same with this, builds confidence with tossing, throwing and catching. The whole Montessori thing is about exploration of your environment. So this is, I'm letting them have this object and go and explore how it's gonna react. How's it gonna react indoors? How it reacts outdoors? And it promote, promotes student success for the colors. I mean, that's one thing, I do have two sets and the kids are like, I want blue. I want blue. And I'll set them in stations and cone it off and like, you're blue today, you're orange today, you're, that way I don't have any problems with that. So all of these things are things that I do to help with little kids developing their hand-eye coordination. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer any questions. We are gonna, uh, on this here, the further you catch from the ball, the more points you get. So. The kids, the, I, I tell them, just tell them here, one, two, three points. And, you know, and it's a lot of the things, it's like the Drew Carey show, you remember you used to do, well, the points don't really matter anyway. It's like, oh, you, you did, yeah, it's all, it's all at the end.